This investigation measures how much energy is in different food. Normally, we burn different types of crisps in a classroom setting. The idea is that whichever crisp causes the greatest temperature increase in the water per gram has the greatest amount of chemical energy measured in joules per gram. This also means that that crisp has the most calories per gram. This video won't go through the method, but will instead go through the science behind the investigation and common questions they can ask on this investigation. Calories on food labels essentially describe how much energy is in that food. It takes roughly 4.2 joules of energy to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius, which is what scientists call the specific heat capacity of water. One centimeter cubed of water is equal to one gram. Luckily, all you need to do is plug the numbers from a question into this equation, which is given to you in the exam, and you do not need to worry about calories or the specific heat capacity of water. For example, calculate the energy per gram released by the Mr. Prick's special crispiest crisps of crisps using the following data. We have 20 centimeter cubed of water, so that means 20 grams of water, multiplied by how much the temperature increased, which is the final temperature, 67 degrees Celsius, minus the initial starting temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. So we plug in 47 degrees Celsius, followed by 4.2 joules per gram, which is the specific heat capacity of water, remember? And we divide this all by the mass of the food sample, which happens to be 1.5 grams. This gives us an answer of 2,632 joules per gram of energy in the crisp. It is important to note that the biggest temperature increase doesn't necessarily mean the most energy per gram, as you need to consider what mass of crisp you were burning in the first place. Burning a bigger crisp with more mass might give you the biggest temperature rise, but when you then divide it by its mass, you get that joules per gram ratio, which is the important number. Why some crisps have more calories in them compared to other crisps is all mainly down to fat content. Fat has a lot of chemical energy compared to carbohydrates and protein. So the crisps with more fat are going to be more energy dense and therefore have the most chemical energy per gram. You might also need to be able to identify the variables and where sources of error might come in when getting energy values. So the type of crisp is the independent variable. The dependent variable is measuring the energy content in the food per gram. The control variables are the amount of water we use and we try to keep the distance between the burning food and the boiling tube the same. When we think of sources of error and inaccuracy, the key things are that it is difficult to burn the entire crisp and often some of the crisp will fall off the mounting needle, meaning you may get a lower temperature increase than expected. This experiment's other main problem is that not all the heat energy from the crisp is transferred to the water, and you may get systematic errors where the food is not held at the same distance from the boiling tube whilst it is burning. We get a lot of heat energy also lost to the environment. In the food industry, they use a bomb calorimeter to measure the calories in the food. A bomb calorimeter has the food contained in a vessel, which can be remotely ignited. The vessel is surrounded by water, which is insulated and has a temperature probe inside. This means nearly all the heat energy released from the food is transferred into the surrounding water, and we get a measurement that is closer to the true value. In a class setting, you can use a cup calorimeter, which is a polystyrene cup that is insulated, but that is not suitable for the burning food experiment, but it is more suitable when measuring the energy released during a chemical reaction within a solution. 